Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Adapting Advertising to a New Normal, Insights, Trends, and the Path Forward During COVID-19. I'm Anushka Pandey. Today I'm joined by David Homan, Amine Atai, and Svetan T. Svetkov from Nielsen. Before we start, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. You've all been placed on mute for this webinar. To ask a question, navigate to the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel on the right of your screen and type into the text field. We will be answering your questions at the end of the webinar. If your question does not get answered, our team will follow up with you via email. The session is being recorded and the recording will be emailed to you tomorrow. Over to you, Peter. David. Hi, this is David Homan, not Peter. Um, I'm the uh, managing director of Nielsen's advertising and agency business, and uh, I will also be your host for this webinar today. Um, first of all, hello, and I hope you and your families and fellow associates are all safe, well, and surviving these unprecedented times. Like you, Nielsen's priority is the health and welfare of our associates and our partners, and this global pandemic has required us to innovate and adapt in new ways in order to overcome the challenges that it's had on our core business. But we remain com committed to providing the data and the insights necessary to empower our clients to successfully run their businesses. Much of the data we're sharing in this webinar today is pulled from a variety of Nielsen sources like Ad Intel, our national TV panel, social content ratings, video game tracking, our Nielsen ROI norms database and long-term effects models, as well as a Nielsen and Wiser COVID-19 impact study. Joining me today on this webinar are Amine Atai, and Svetan Svetkov, who I'm going to ask to introduce themselves. Amine? Hi, everyone. I am Amine Atai. I am the SVP and Managing Director um, of an audience measurement business within Nielsen. And I, in my, in my work experience, I've been working with a lot of advertisers and agencies. Hello, my name is Svetan Svetkov. I go by T for obvious reasons. and. Uh, I'm actually on David's team in the Agency and Advertiser Solutions uh, um, organization and very much focused on the plan and optimize business. So understanding your marketing ROI. Great. The next slide, please. 
So um, our global advertising trends across the world, um, these times are unprecedented and challenging as we're all affected by this outbreak. Uh, in regards to global advertising, we're seeing different trends in different markets. Italy, uh, the worst hit market in Europe, had seen a 5% decline in volume of unique TV ads in the early part of this year. Um, similarly, the UK, France, and Germany also saw declines. But um, not all markets have shown signs of a slowdown. Uh, TV ad volumes in Belgium and the Netherlands have increased by 4.2% and 4.5% respectively. And India is similarly an outlier where ad volumes increased 13% in the first two weeks of March. <clears throat> in fact, staying at home during the pandemic is fast tracking e-commerce adoption with 28% of uh, global increase in online shoppers and much higher e-commerce retail sales. Next slide, please. So media consumption and shopping habits across the globe are changing. Uh, people are spending more time at home and online and shelter in place and work from home measures are driving increased time with media. Shopping has also changed. There's a new retail reality as consumers have been panic purchasing um, and creating short shortages in the supply chain due to um, loading up their pantries. Um, we've also seen an increase in e-commerce adoption like grocery delivery. And more generally, there's economic volatility. You know, financial markets and employment are top of mind as people deal with uncertainty on an almost daily basis. In general, COVID-19 is impacting virtually every facet of our lives. Next slide, please. So there are consumer behavior shifts. In the US, COVID is driving consumers to try new activities and adapt to technology at a faster rate than before. Uh, it's important to understand that while behaviors are shifting and emerging through this pandemic, um, we're not quite sure yet which behaviors are here to stay. For example, uh, we're learning that consumers are more open to virtual shopping. Will this continue post COVID-19? According to Nielsen and Weiser's COVID-19 impact study, we found that 22% of respondents said that they're ordering groceries online for the first time during the outbreak, and 28% are ordering groceries online more often. Additionally, 35% are taking, uh, getting takeout from local restaurants for the first time, and 35% also more often. And 12% signed up for a new video streaming service 14% paid to download and watch individual movies or TV. Given today's altered business reality, how can you adapt to strategies to enable short and long-term success? Next slide. So during the webinar today, we're going to review how COVID-19 is affecting the US in particular. On a high level, we review shifts in media consumption across channels, financial considerations that prove why marketing is not discretionary spend, and steps you can take in the short term and long term to ensure that you're set up for success in navigating these challenging times. Now I'll pass the baton to Amine Atai to take you through the details. Amine? Thanks, Dave. Um, hi, well, hi, everyone again. So let's dig in. We've all seen interesting and sometimes incredibly impressive videos on social media. Uh, shelter in place is pushing us to find creative ways to entertain ourselves. But that being said, media consumption and engagement across channels has increased significantly, with more time being spent on consuming content. In this section, I will review how this content consumption is trending across five different channels, TV, social, streaming, radio, and gaming. Let's take a look at TV first. Um, on this chart, the middle bar is the, is the most current week, of, uh, current week for a given demo. To the left is the pre-COVID week, week, and in the shaded gray is the same week a year ago. Not surprisingly, total US television consumption, that middle bar, is higher year over year across all demos. When we look across total television consumption, connected devices show the greatest growth. Interestingly is that for teen and 1825, that connected device consumption takes up 60% of their weekly time spent in media, 
which is five to seven percent points higher than a month ago, and 13 to 15 percent percentage points from the previous year. Now, um, in the next slide, as you can probably see better in this chart, the increase in TV consumption is across all demos, with the 55 plus age bracket showing the highest consumption trends overall. News ranking, uh, sorry, news ratings are trending around 50% higher than they were in 2019. If we think about a few weeks back in March 16th, when government, when government stay-at-home orders were taken into effect, some of us were glued to our TV watching more local news than we've ever had in years. This caused that week to have the highest news ratings. But in general, we see substantial increases across all news types, local, national, cable, uh, when comparing news viewings to the equivalent period last year. And the last point here I want to make is that local news maintains their spot as the number one news, news source on TV. So we covered TV. Let's look at social specifically, um, uh, social and specifically engagement around TV programs. Uh, with the stall of most professional sports, sports fanatics are finding other ways to interact with their favorite teams. One sports stable that has remained in place is the NFL draft, which has seen crazy high viewership and social engagement. As you can see, compared to 2019, that social activity grew over 81% with over 55 million viewers, and that's only over three, three days. So across all rounds, the 2020 NFL draft is the number one most engaged social TV event since Jan 2019, ahead of both 2019 and 2020 Super Bowl games. And more generally, uh, you know, these uh, uh, deprived sports fans have turned to tweeting about other shows like sports theme documentaries, programming with action-packed content, and what many of us have on our brains when we're sitting at home, uh, food. Man vs. Food had a major 84% overlap with NBA tweeting audiences in particular. There's a lot more stats where that came from, but let's let's uh, take a quick look at streaming. Uh, during week of April 13th, which is presented as that fourth bar on the first chart, there were over 154 billion minutes of stream content uh, to the television set. This is up from nearly 80 billion compared to the same week a year ago. Radio. This graph does not look that fun, but actually it's quite surprising. Despite stay-at-home measures, radio retains 96% of its previous weekly reach. As part of that, while out of home is still dominant, there's a 29 increase in in-home. We're seeing more listening from essential workers, you know, health and healthcare workers and drivers that can stay home. And finally, gaming. Gaming hours are up. And despite how some of us living with gamers may have thought that would be physically impossible, but at least uh, at least 45% of US gamers claim that they play video games much more often due to COVID-19. They're also watching stream gaming content more frequently as well. So we covered five channels and clearly media consumption is on the rise. But as most of us know and, or have experienced, we're faced with this pandemic paradox of advertisers looking to cut budgets. It's interesting because during this period of time, we also see consumers much more willing to try other brands because of uh, supply chain shortages or um, lockouts for the number of products that um, clients can buy. And we know from um, history in looking at how um, advertisers and brands in particular have dealt with crises in the past, that those brands who continue to advertise often come out of a crisis stronger and faster than those that don't. Thanks, Sylvia. Yeah, that, that, that's true. And it's, you know, this seems to be such a missed opportunity. And uh, so how can we navigate that? Uh, if we go to the next slide. 70% of brands and agencies are changing their ad spend due to COVID-19. 
and there's a lot of uncertainty for the second half of the year. 67% uh, percent of brands in, and agencies are still determining their, their spend plans. And when I saw this, the first question I asked was that, what about the remaining 30%? Are they increasing? Are they lowering? But the answer was that they've confirmed plans, so they've secured the budgets, but uh, some are increasing and some are uh, keeping their budgets the same. And of course, some are lowering. Next slide. And while these cuts are a reality that most of us are facing, decreasing ad spend to secure short-term profits is usually quite detrimental to long-term gains. Uh, when we look at you know, past three historic shocks, brands that maintain or increase ad spend saw a 0.5% in share point, increase in share points. In fact, marketing well while on a budget can can protect up to 9% of total brand sales annually. And if you look at the long-term impacts of not advertising, companies who choose to pull back uh, their ad spend with no media on air uh, saw a long-term revenue impact of negative 2% quarterly. We will deep, we'll deep dive into this when we look at next steps in, a, in, in the next section. But the depressing fact on this slide is, on average, it takes three to five years to recover equity losses from going dark for an extended period of time. We all know investing in marketing enables both short and long-term success. On average, the long-term impact of marketing is 88% higher than the short-term. Uh, if you're trying to make sense of this, this graph here, the, the horizontal bar is the long-term um, ROI for, for that given channel. So if we're looking at TV, the long-term ROI is around two, and then the variance is between uh, one and three, and you can see that you know, for different channels. Today, we've seen a lot of companies thanking healthcare professionals rather than, than promoting their own solutions. This tactic actually helps um, enable brand awareness and influence perceptions. In the short term, consumers become familiar with the brand, which can help companies enter into, the, into their consideration set. And in, over the long term, media messaging impacts customers' opinion of the brand overall, with the objective being, of course, getting your company on the list of options before the purchase cycle commences. In another webinar um, that uh, we presented for the automotive vertical, in specific, we explained when the time of purchase comes, 90% 90% of top of mind brands make it into the purchase intent bucket. Or in other words, if you're not top of mind as a brand, you only have a 10% chance of even being considered. Uh, plus when a, a customer is considering a new purchase and actively in the purchase cycle, media and incentives have a direct short-term impact on, that, on the sale. Yeah, and just one thing to add here, Amane, is uh, there's obviously the short-term impact of incrementality from the media that you're running. Uh, some other elements of the long-term impact would be if you all, I'm sure many people have taken economics in college, if you're thinking about the, um, the demand curve, what advertising is really doing for you is it's shifting out the demand curve. So what that would do is it would really be build your base sale, it will really build your brand equity so you can really ride that way for a longer period of time. It would also allow you to charge a higher price, so you can actually charge a price premium if you are uh, advertising more and are more available top of mind of, of those consumers. Thanks, T. Uh, you know, we shared a lot of stats, and given today's new reality, what can we can, what can we do? Um, how can we adapt to you know uh, be successful? Let's let's first look at past learnings. Uh, in past disruptions, we saw that media consumption increased as consumers stayed at home. Shoppers had decreased number of trips to the store and reprioritized shopping list. Um, they also focused on value more than uh, more in their uh, you know decision making. And overall, consumption of goods services typically recovered within a year. And using these past disruptions as a reference, you can shift your focus to future-proofing your strategy. Advertising now is critical, and to do it effectively, consider taking these three steps. And don't worry, we'll double-click on every single one. 
But number one, create appropriate and relevant messaging to ensure content and messaging that resonates with the right audience. Two is revisit your go-to-market plan. And three is use measurement to inform future plans and proactively optimize campaigns. So let's, let's cover um, how to create appropriate and relevant messaging uh, to connect with consumers in the short term while we build brand equity in the long term. During this time of experimentation, consumers are shifting to less brand loyal. Uh, to sh the consumers are shifting to be less brand loyal than pre-COVID. 41% of consumers are more likely to buy from a brand promoting ads that explain that the company is doing to help employees and um, customers. So focus on brand building is more important than ever before during this time. Looking at this graph, you can see reasons why consumers are likely to consider different brands during this time. The top reason is to buy uh, is availability, which makes sense. But what's more riveting here is the company behind the brand is helping people affected by coronavirus is the second. You can also see that 69% of respondents consider brand switching because of recent advertising that they've seen about how those companies are responding to the coronavirus pandemic, which emphasizes this need to focus on short-term conversions in addition to long-term brand building initiatives. And a little pro tip here uh, is to maximize brand recall, place your brand within the first seven seconds on a non-skippable ad and even sooner on a skippable ad. So media channel alone uh, contributes only to 50% of effectiveness. Good creative um, should also reinforce branding. As you can see, um, around 40% of ad, um, ads general recall comes from creative factors. So a creative that connects is critical and messaging really matters. Emotion-based ads are hard to do, but worth it when they, when they can be made. Emotional ads, I believe, perform nearly two and a half times better than purely rational ads, which makes sense since decision-making is actually done by our limbic brain, which is connected to emotions and memory versus the neocortex, which is connected to cognition, logic, and language. So connecting with that emotional side is, is very important. Again, hard to do, but uh, worth it when you can make it work. Um, what is also true is that even before COVID-19 hit, almost half of consumers were willing to trade up on price for products with quality and safety assurances. So focus on emphasizing those. And, and consumers are especially looking for value due to economic in public, uh, sorry, the economic in um, an uncertainty. And value is not just price. It is dry, derived from quality, trust, uniqueness, claims and benefits, and of course, pricing and incentives. And just to add here, I mean, I'm getting some questions around uh, when, when this data is from. It is indeed from 2017, but again, this is information that uh, we've developed about two or three years ago. In terms of what's actually happening during the, the COVID situation is something that we're still looking to track. The point of this slide is really, uh, we're looking at averages here. So the average impact between media, brand and creative within the effectiveness of your advertising it is different for every brand. So the impact of brand might be a lot, a lot larger if you're talking about a really impactful brand with a lot of brand equity. The impact of media itself could very much be dependent on exactly how you're targeting your consumers and if you're using your media channels in the most optimal way. And ultimately the creative, it all, it all comes down to the relevance of that creative as Amin was talking in terms of inciting the right behavior, inciting the right emotions within the consumers to be able to, uh, to recognize the brand as well as remember the uh, advertising during the uh, following few weeks after they've seen the ad. Thanks, T. Um, next slide. Another way to break through the clutter uh, is to clearly demonstrate how your company is helping. We touched on this a little before, and it personally makes me very happy to see that consumers are starting to really care about this and corporate social responsibility. And so investing in corporate social responsibility is an easy way to build your brand. 55% of consumers are willing to pay extra to, for products and services from companies committed to positive social and economic impact. Once you've nailed 
down your messaging strategy, you need to then revisit and iterate your go-to-market plan. In a world of um, shifting behaviors, take advantage of consumer, uh, sorry, consumption activity trends to inform your overarching strategy, specifically how you allocate your marketing spend across platforms and channels. This is my favorite slide. Uh, let's talk about the impact of not advertising. Uh, Nielsen MMM analysis shows that short-term decisions to go dark also put significant risk to long-term revenue, both incremental revenue and base sales, which are, which are associated with things like brand equity, distribution, and product value. Uh, our database of long-term effect models suggests that cutting ad uh, advertising for the rest of 2020 could lead up to 11% revenue decrease in 2021. And as shown earlier in the deck, it takes up three to five years of solid and consistent brand building efforts to recover from extended dark period of media. T, I know uh, you know more about this slide than I do. Do you have anything to add here? Yeah, absolutely. And again, we have a ton of evidence out there about these types of situations. We've seen uh, over our historical analysis, companies that do this, they would uh, step away from uh, massive advertising efforts for a period of time, whether it's a couple of quarters or a full year or longer. And you can see literally how long it takes for them to build up that equity, to build that uh, up that baseline set of sales that could ultimately drive more incrementality of the media. So think of this as the media working in two different ways. One, to build the equity, and second, to build the incremental sales, short-term incremental sales on top of that base, on top of that equity. The other way to think about this is you spend a lot of time building the momentum. The moment you stop advertising, you're basically losing all this momentum that you build over time, and you need to recover that, and it takes a long, long time to do so. Thanks. Um, we can move to the next slide. Uh, when prioritizing ad spend, it's also important to leverage the strength of uh, your portfolio. Media performance and effectiveness are different across brands, giving you the, the opportunity to double down on strong performance and curb investment in lower performing brands. If you took a, take a look at the chart on this slide, you can see that making a decision to cut at, um, advertising across the board could mean uh, le uh, leaving a lot of money on the table especially for the brands within the portfolio that are delivering an ROI that is around two times higher on average. Essentially, the point here is prioritize your promotions and investments accordingly. Know your portfolio, know which, which brands are stronger than others and, and take that to your, uh, to your advantage. And as, as consumers experiment, focus on customer acquisition. 12% of consumers are taking the opportunity to discover new brands. Uh, with relevant marketing on air during COVID-19, advertisers have the opportunity to what marketing was created to do, grow the business through consumer penetration. 69% of CMOs uh, stated that their top priority was either one, acquire customers, and that was like 41% of the 69, or two, increase awareness. COVID-19 creates a unique opportunity for marketers to do both of those things. And to build engagement, we can reiterate that cliche of identify the right consumers at the right moment and with the right context. But what's really important is that, you know, I, I, we've looked at a lot of different companies and their data strategy, and there's always a big focus on, you know, going after audiences that are currently buying your product because that gives you a really good short-term ROI. And it makes, you know, all the reporting you show to executives look good. But there is a really important and good opportunity right now to shift some of that budget to reaching non-loyal buyers, um, you know, so switchers or category entrants because they're willing to try things. Um, and, and we can go to the next slide. And in order to execute a solid go-to-market strategy, you need to measure, which can enable you to inform your decisions in the short term and understand the impact in the long term. Uh, using the data from these studies, like using the data from these studies is pivotal in optimizing your go to go forward uh, plan. Just you know, going back to the basics of data driven marketing and leveraging measurement effectively. So, what are the three things here? First, 
uh, adopt. Start by creating a foundational knowledge base of KPIs. This involves determining what your company measures consistently, then pulling that together and, 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 and continuously referencing and updating it. Second, adapt. Evaluate additional success criteria, including short-term and long-term uh, impact, and then understand the return of each. Additionally, as we discussed before, leverage the strength of your portfolio, the top 25% of your brands within the same, uh, within uh, the top 25% of brands can perform up to, or potentially more, of uh, uh, two and a half times better than the bottom 25%. Leverage that. And third, accelerate. Use optimization and measurement capabilities to understand where your consumers and prospects are to iterate upon, evolve, at uh, your strategy. So very simple example there is consumers are experimenting with e-commerce. It may be worthwhile shifting spend uh, there to ensure conversions. Other more interesting data points will surface themselves when you have your full view of your spend and levers you are able to pull uh, for each channel. We've covered a lot in a very short period of time. I'm going to pass it back to Dave to summarize some of the key learnings, and then we'll switch to Q&A. Thanks, Dominic. Can we have the next slide, please? So as you think about what's next in order to adapt your advertising strategy to today's new normal, uh, be sure to understand shifts in media consumption and consumer behavior, and use the learnings to inform your strategy. Understand the trends. Where are consumers today and what channels are they on? Make the most of your budget. Where is your company currently investing? How do you prove the value of marketing? And finally, adapt your strategy and investments to ensure success. Are your messages connecting with consumers? Which parts of your portfolio are you leveraging? What do you need to measure and how will that enable decision making in the short and the long term? We'll now be moving to questions. Um, thank you for making time to spend with us this afternoon. We will continue to monitor consumer behavior during these challenging times and remain committed to providing you with all of the data and insights you need to manage your businesses. Please stay home and stay safe. If you have any questions, please submit them via the GoToWebinar control panel on the right of your screen or email, email us directly at marketingsolutions at nielsen.com. As a reminder, we'll be sending out a recording of this session early next week. With that, I'll pass it over to T for questions and answers. T? Thank you, Dave. And it uh, seems like almost everybody uh, is sending questions from the 800 participants in this webinar. So it's great to see a lot of the questions are uh, procedural. We would be sending a recording of this session uh, for everybody who either joined late or would like to hear us uh, talk again. Uh, there's some uh, basic questions around um, the uh, some of the acronyms we're using. We'll make sure that uh, uh, we clarify those if you send us an email at the address that uh, Dave just described. There's some, uh, one of the questions is around, hey, are you recommending that we continue with the consistency in our advertising? Uh, what we are recommending is that you don't go dark simply because you want to take your marketing dollars and add them to the, to the to your bottom line, right? So if you if your advertising is paying back, if your return on investment is more than a dollar for every dollar that you spend, it makes no sense to take those dollars and put them against your bottom line. Um, so that's one of the, uh, the the pieces of advice there. Uh, in terms of the consistency, uh, there is le it's less about the consistency; it's more about not going dark. You can still change your allocation in the channels that you invest in. So we absolutely recommend to our clients that they take another look and re-optimize how they advertise um, on different media channels, as well as how much they invest in their various brands. Because we've seen that some brands may perform better than others uh, in the current environment. So in order to maximize that return on investment, we would recommend uh, taking a closer look at that, uh, that reallocation. Uh, we also have a question here. I'm just trying to go in and read some of those. A question about um, how, how permanent do we think that these changes in media consumption will be? Uh, well, obviously, it's really hard to predict the future, especially in the current environment. 
But what we do expect is uh, that some of that pendulum of media consumption will swing back. The big question is, will it swing back all the way? And we don't believe it will. I mean, there's some very specific behavior changes that would incrementally have changed for, for the various age groups that Amine mentioned uh, on a go-forward basis. So even after recovery, we uh, fully expect that some of the channel shifting and some of the additional engagement we, we see, whether it's with social or with, with mobile, uh, will continue. Um, uh, let's see. So there's a question about um, uh, controlling costs and seeing a decline in uh, advertising spend. As I said, uh, this is similar to the previous question. At which point should we reverse this trend? Um, well, we would definitely recommend that you don't wait for the full recovery to come across for you to reverse those trends, right? As we, as we discuss, some of these um, advertising effects are being are built over time. So really anticipating and being on air and having the right share of voice out in the marketplace is a really important factor to uh, hit the ground running when uh, the recovery um, starts happening and when you're actually seeing your sales come back where you're seeing your consumers come back into your stores or in your restaurants and start buying your goods, et cetera, and services. Um, this is three, let's see, I'm just gonna look through the list here and look for any other uh, questions that are not procedural or clarification questions. Um, is there, uh, for COVID-19 related advertising, is there any measure of perceived sincerity versus opportunism and its subsequent impact on consumers' impressions? Um, it's definitely something that uh, can be analyzed by looking at the nature of your various creatives. If uh, we have the ability, if you have the ability to classify your creatives in these various um, uh, categories around sincerity or opportunism, uh, we can definitely take a look and be able to um, separate out, if you will, those uh, those different effects. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe... There's a question here yeah. that I can answer. Uh, yeah. the, someone asked on the don't uh, go dark slide, was the 11% if stopping as through end of 2020? And that's correct. Sorry if I was not clear on that. That is if you um, go dark for uh, till end of 2020. And there's another question that asks, and I don't know T, if you know this off the top of your head, the same slide, can you restate the number, uh, the percentage in business a brand can uh, expect by going dark? The loss in business? Uh, yeah. It can be, uh, yeah. So, um, Usually what we see is that the long-term effect, what we call multiplier, in years two and three, after your advertising have gone dark, is about equal to the loss you're going to have in year one. So we definitely see an impact in year one. If you um, your advertising typically drives between, I would say, 5 and 15% of your sales. Sometimes we can have it as high as 20 or 30%, depending on the category. So you can think about that same impact as an impact on your base sales uh, over the two or three year period following uh, going dark. So these, these impacts can be quite, quite large. Uh, they, they can often be in the double digits, so in the, in the low to upper teens. Gee, there's a question here of, as measurement is a very broad term. Can you share more specifics on the scope and breadth of measurement, for example, cross-channel attribution, lift, brands, uh, studies, what should be a priority for the remainder of the year since not everything can be done? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think it obviously depends on your individual uh, business and the individual brands that you're looking to advertise. Uh, there is different mechanism and different uh, methodologies to be able to uh, kind of read all these impacts and, and really mean different uh, types of measurement that you can execute. Uh, usually with uh, any type of uh, lift studies and uh, test and control types of analyses, it's something that you can very quickly do and understand a particular campaign or a particular engagement uh, tactic that you've, uh, you've, you've undertaken, whether it's, uh, you know, currently with COVID or shortly after. For a broader understanding of the mix of your marketing vehicles and how can you optimize across those, 
and also be able to detect changes in behavior uh, around the types of channels that you should be advertising in uh, to reach your consumers or to reach your consumers in a different, more effective way. Uh, marketing mix is uh, uh, a study you can you can employ as well as uh, multi-patch attribution specific to be able to allocate your digital investments. We would also recommend, uh, especially when it comes down to understanding your consumer segment segments, is to really be thinking about the consumer segmentations, look-alike models that you can do to uh, to understand some of the, some of the behavior as well. Okay, I've got another question here. This is, can you reiterate what you meant by effect on the be afraid of the dark slide? Yeah, so the effectiveness here is um, very much related to the volume you're able to generate for a particular uh, set of exposures. So uh, I know that the metric on there or the unit was uh, GRPs. So uh, this is just one of the ways to measure exposure. It could be impressions. It could be clicks, any other types of engagement and how it drives outcomes, how it drives behavior. Uh, that's what we're looking to usually uh, assess and estimate and measure is that relationship between the exposure and the outcome. I know we have a pretty long list of questions here. Okay, um, can you elaborate uh, this specific uh, link to the chart? Okay, um, do you recommend to cut marketing budget for offers and reinvest it in brands themselves? Uh, that's, a, I, that, that's, that's a very good question. I, I, uh, Here's how I would approach this. Uh, we definitely need to be able to look at um, fulfillment. Are you able to actually fulfill your call to action? Uh, and uh, often our clients ask us about this relationship between the short-term promotional and trade effects versus more of the long-term media effects that, that they might be seeing out there. That relationship is often uh, misunderstood. Uh, it, it really has two very different objectives. Uh, what we see a lot is um, that um, in terms of just running both of these tactics at the same time, we often see a synergistic effect from being able to advertise and at the same time be able to uh, fulfill or um, drive price discounting during the same period. So we would definitely recommend exploring how, do you, how are you able to stack the various forms of advertising, but uh, make sure that you also explore the, the promotional effect. And I think this is the last question to the question A. So I'm going to turn it over to Anushka to close. Yeah. Thank you for attending today's webinar, everyone. Um, for questions regarding the code, um, as you see on the screen, please email marketing solutions at nielsen.com. Since we weren't able to answer, we'll try to send an email out to you. Have a nice day. Thank you.